Hey guys, so today we are going to be working on um, Everyday Math Lesson 5.11, the Break Apart Strategy. And this is one of my favorite strategies. I feel like this is where um, the students are starting to understand how we can break numbers and use them to get our answers that we need. So after the lesson, you're going to have your home link to do then math boxes and I want you to play a game called Fraction Top It um, on the Everyday Math website. Again, we have our test on Wednesday, so I want to make sure that you are working with the fractions because that will be part of the test. Our objective for today is I can use the break apart strategy to solve multiplication problems. So we're going to do some quick dots. You are going to see some dots arranged on a card. You need to um, find the, pro the number of dots that are there and then give me the answer. Be thinking about how you can group these dots. You should have said 12. There were two groups of 6, so 6 times 6 is 12. All right, let's do another one. you should have said 18. This one had three groups of six, so if I knew that two groups of six is 12, then I can add six more to get 18. And finally, you should have said 20. There were four groups of five, so we can count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. All right, so turn in your math journal to page 185. And we're going to look at the top at the math message. And it says, the marching band is planning their next show. They begin by forming an array with seven rows and six marchers in each row. Then they separate into two smaller arrays that still have six marchers in each row. Use centimeter cubes to show one way that they could do this. Record your thinking by shading in squares on one of the grids below. Then repeat showing a different way. So we are going to look at how we can um, find these numbers and um, make two smaller groups. So one of the ways that we've learned is that we can take an even number and split it in half. So if I'm thinking um, about splitting it in half, I could do that, but it does say that um, two smaller groups that have six marchers, marchers in each row. So if I were to think about it, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to go down until I have seven rows. All right, now that I have my... Um, rows of marchers. I have seven rows with six in each row. Um, so I have a seven by six um, array. I want to um, separate them into two smaller arrays that still have six in each row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at separating them. And I want to separate them. I could do um, right here. So then I would have three and four rows. So I would have three and four rows. Um, another way that I could do this is to take my array and see if I can split it another way. Again, I have a seven by six um, array and I want to split this in a different way. So I want to split it using, let's go with two. So I want to split it into two. And then since I know that this whole thing is seven, I'm not going to have seven anymore, but there's going to be five at the bottom. So I split it into two and five. These are two different ways that I could split this array when I by keeping six in each row. These are two different ways. All right, so let's look at this rectangle. This is number one on page 185. 
you have a rectangle garden that is seven feet wide and eight feet long. You decide to plant flowers in one section and ve vegetables in another. Sketch at least two different ways. You could partition or divide your garden into two rectangular sections. Label each side of your new, label the side lengths of each of your new rectangles. So I'm looking at my rectangles and I have two. I have the seven by eight two times. So I want to split one of them. And one thing I know that I can do is eight is even so I can split it down the middle. And I'm not going to have eight feet anymore, but four and four. So we need to do four and four. Um, then it says to split it a second way. I'm going to split it the seven now into not seven feet altogether, but I'm gonna go with that two and five like we did last time. And I wanna find an easier way to solve these problems, to help us to solve this problem. One would be if I said four times seven, and that equals 28 this one would also be 28. Here, I'm not dividing them or doubling them. I would do two times eight equals 16. And then this part of my rectangle is five, so I would do five times eight equals 40. Now, I know from my doubling one, I'm gonna do 28 plus 28 and that equals 56. And then for this, where I split this, this side, that is seven, I'm gonna do 16 plus 40, and that equals 56. Okay, so we started off with breaking the eight and said, well, we could double it. Then we said, well, we could split the seven, and I split it with a two and a five. Now, I could have done a three and a four, but one thing that I want to do is I want to pick numbers that are going to be multiplied um, by something that I can count by. I know how to count by twos. I know how to count by fives. So that would have been easier for me to break apart seven that way. Now, moving forward, I need to write a number model to um, match what we did. and. One thing that we're going to learn about soon is that when we have a number model like this, you have to multiply the fractions first. Sorry, you have to multiply the products or multiply where there are products and then we can add them together because that add is in the middle. We're going to do both of those two multiplication problems and then add them together. So the first one, I'm gonna go with this two, um, I'm gonna go with the two by eight. So we split that into two and eight and we split the bottom into a five by eight rectangle. We already knew that this was 16, this was 40, and then we would add those two numbers together to get 56. We already did the work over here, but to write it on this number sentence, we would write two times eight plus five times eight. So we solve the multiplication first, then we add them together. Let's look at another one. So this is number two on page 186. And it says, your friend wants to solve eight times nine. You suggest that she imagine a garden that is eight feet wide and nine feet long. Help her break eight and nine into two smaller helper facts. Eight times nine into two smaller helper facts using the rectangular garden. All right, so we have to decide, do we want to break the eight or do we want to break the nine? And 
I think I want to break the eight. I know that I could break it in half, but I'm going to try something different. So one way to break apart the eight by nine foot garden, I will break apart the factor, I'm picking eight, into blank and blank. So I'm going to split this. And the way that I wanted to split it was three and five. Three plus five equals the whole eight feet. So I'm splitting that into a three and five. The factor nine is going to stay the same. We're not changing the nine, we're leaving that alone. Then it says to show what we did on the rectangle, we already have drawn the rectangle to show where we split it. Now, the next part says helper facts that match the areas of the smaller rectangles. I'm going to use some different colors here. So I want to know the area of the top and I want to know the area of the bottom. So to find area, we multiply length times width. So my bottom one is going to be 5, and then this is 9. So my bottom number is going to be 5 times 9. Then the top is going to be 9 times 3. So 9 times 3. Um, then I can solve 5 times 9. Well, I can count by fives. So it would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So 5 times 9 is 45. And then 9 times 3. The reason I did this was because I can count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. It's going to be 10. So I'm going to stop at 27. Now that I have this, I can add my two products. 45 plus 27. 5 plus 5 is 2. And I'm going to carry that 1. And it is 7. 8 times 9 is 72. All right, let's look at number three. Break apart one of the factors to solve. I want to break apart the seven into two and five. Two plus five is seven. Show what you did on the rectangle. I split it here. This becomes two. This becomes five. Next, I'm going to need to do my multiplication problems. 6 times 2 equals 12. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Then I'm going to do 6 times 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Finally, I'm going to add those two numbers together. 12 plus 30 equals 42. 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, we are going to look at two um, problems from Evaluate. This one was from January, and then one of them is from November. So I have this big number, 7 times 12, and I don't know how to count by 12s, and it's a big number. But something that I can do is draw my rectangle. If this is 7, this is 12. I want to break this into numbers that are going to be easier for me to multiply. The first one, the one that kind of sticks out to me is this one means 10, so I think I'm going to jump 
break it into 10 and then to get to 12 it would be two more. So now what I'm left with is 7 times 2 and that equals 14. Remember I'm not doing the 12 anymore, I broke it apart. This is 7, so I'm going to do 7 times 10 and that equals 70. Now I'm going to add 70 plus 14 and that equals 84. This is one of the reasons why I love this strategy because something as as something like this number that we see on evaluate you wouldn't necessarily think to break it apart but you can break apart into numbers that are going to be easier to multiply. Breaking apart the 12 helped me to solve that. When I look at my numbers, I had four people or 14 people get this correct. And then thankfully nobody said 111. Um, I don't know, seven said 26 or 74. And then um, six said 19. So we're on the right track. I want to see if we can increase this um, next time we see this type of problem. This one, I believe, was from November. Same thing. We're going to solve 8 times 12 this time. So here's 8, 12. Again, I want to split 12. I can see that there's a 10. So I'm going to do 10 and then the two ones. That's what I'm going to be left with. So I have 8 times 2, and that equals 16. I'm going to write it down here. 10 times 8 equals 80. So I'm going to do 16 plus 80, and that equals 96. It's one of my choices. Very similar numbers. We had 16 out of 29 people get this one correct. And um, when we look at it, here's 16. And then um, four people picked 86, four people picked 20, and then maybe two people picked 108. So again, a good number. We just want to get more people um, answering that question correctly. And I feel like we're going to get better because we can use this break apart strategy. All right, looking at this one, I just wanted to have one of these on here. Select the equation that will help you to solve 27 divided by 3. The way that we need to do this is to write out our fact families. We know that we have a division, so another division would be 27 divided by the blank number equals 3. I need 2 multiplication now, so I'm going to go with 3 times the blank number equals 27 and the blank number times 3 equals 27. Then I'm going to look which one of these four um, problems is over on the left side. So definitely not 27 times 3. I do see something divided by 3 and really the only time that I had a blank spot it was times 3 so that one's not going to work. 3 times something equals 27. That one matches here. Let's check. 27 times. I never have 27 and times next to each other. So my answer is going to be the third one. Only 10 people got this correct when um, we took this test and there were this question in November. All right. The next thing um, you will be doing is completing your home link where you will be solving a couple break apart strategy problems and then you will do a math box and finally you will play um, fraction top it with pictures one. This is where you're going to be comparing two fractions when you see them and determine which one's bigger.